What's going on, guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS, bringing you the very last war here in Week 11, CWL Invite. Uh, the matchup, Forge from Steel took on One Hive 2.0, and as you guys see it on your screen, FFS taking yet another loss. The final, 122 to 124, was a very, very close war, came down to about the last hour. Uh, I would say maybe even the last half hour before we really knew how this war was going to end. Uh, I will go ahead and break down uh, some of the stats for you guys. I do have a few very, very incredible attacks uh, to share with you guys. Uh, with this victory, however, for the 2.0 side, they are actually going to be going to the playoffs. So congratulations to them. Huge shout out to the guys and girls over in One Hive 2.0. They did pick up a wild card uh, slot with this victory. Uh, we were pretty much playing spoiler. There's no real way uh, mathematically, even with the victory in this war, where we could have gone to the playoffs. Uh, but it was our very first season uh, in invite. And we ended with our record ended at four and seven. And one interesting thing uh, that we looked at uh, last night, we were going over all the stats and everything. Every single clan that Forge from Steel lost to, all seven losses uh, here in Invite, all seven of those clans are in the playoffs. Uh, at the end of the day, we did have a very, very tough schedule. We have warred some of the best clans in the world. Uh, still picked up four victories on the season. Uh, again, this was our last war. And we'll see, you know, we are excited to see how the playoffs go for all the other clans. Uh, the finals go down in, I mean, over a month. It's going to be a pretty long playoff season. Uh, December 15th is when the final war, uh, the championship war for invite season three goes down. Uh, but with that said, we will go ahead and uh, look at each side of the map, show you guys what everybody did. It was a very, very competitive war, very even on pretty much the majority of the stats, except one, which was the 10v10s. Uh, as you guys see it right here, on uh, their side of the map, we were able to clear all of their Town Hall 11s with our Town Hall 10s. That was absolutely huge. I will be showing one of you guys uh, one of those hit-ups a little later on. Jacob, big shout out to Jacob, got a, yet another uh, 10v11 four-pack, absolutely huge. I will show you guys the hit on their number five a little later on. Uh, as far as our dips, uh, I mean, as far as our dip, we only had one dip fail. Uh, for those of you keeping score at home, uh, what, the, what was the breakdown? Six, what was it? Uh, 618? No, it was 620. I think it was a 620 breakdown of 45 v 45. Uh, that's why the score was so high. Uh, the star totals only had one dip fail, guys. So, very, very solid performance on our side. Only having one dip fail, and that dip fail came early on into the war. And if you guys look at their side, they had one dip fail and none other than on my base. I could not believe it. 98% uh, on my base. Uh, but that was the only dip fail of the war. Uh, so, again, very, very close. They also cleared all of our uh, Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s. And we did have two 10v10s on their number 15. Shout out to Gooves. And on their number 25, shout out to Helicase. Uh, one stat, uh, you know, or one thing that we've pretty much been consistent on throughout, uh, you know, throughout the league in, uh, you know, throughout the season is 10 v 10s. That was not the case so much, uh, in this war. Uh, we only had two 10 v 10s. I mean, we've pretty much been averaging anywhere from four to five 10 v 10s every single war. Not sure if it was because the last war or what exactly happened, uh, but 2.0, they had four 10v10s. Again, that's what we were averaging, uh, but just did not cut. You know, we did have a lot of close calls on a lot of their bases. Um, shout out to BRG. Uh, did have a lot of close calls on their bases. I had a 91% and that base ended up staying up. Uh, but I mean, was very, very close. We did have a, a few very, very close calls where we had to burn a few more hits in order to get uh, their number 15 down oh, with a couple tweaks, but we were able to get it done. Uh, but having said that, I do want to show you guys a few replays, a couple of these fresh 9v9 hits. We're going to go ahead and start off with uh, Legit Black, a.k.a. Ozil, uh, going to be doing this hit uh 
doing a Sui Hero Lalo. So he went ahead and just dropped one loon on that CC in order to pull it, at least pull all the air targeting stuff out of it. And he's going to be suing down here at 6 o'clock. Uh, going to be getting pretty good value from his heroes. Did go ahead and uh, he did have one poison in order uh, to take out that CC, whatever it was. Again, this was uh, a fresh hit. Nice wall break uh, for Queen to go in. Uh, already picked up one air defense. She's actually going, she's actually going to be walking around. Uh, if she went in, she would have picked up that expo. Uh, so going to have to adjust here on the fly. Here comes a little Valkyrie uh, as the king pulled the ground troops out of the CC. Uh, so queen's going to go ahead and die right before that Tesla. Uh, plan was to start Lalo up here at about 11 o'clock. Uh, just going to be going around this base. Uh, hoping to go counterclockwise around this base as he's dropping his uh, hit some more camp pounds down here uh, at about 730. Uh, just hasting everything in. Nice rage in the core. Does have a skelly uh, to take out the enemy queen. A max skelly going to be coming out of uh, the clan castle. Going to go ahead and drop that right on top of the queen. There it goes. And all these balloons right there in the core. Only a few defenses left. Uh, does have some Teslas over at 3 o'clock where the balloons are going to be ending up. Uh, but he does have a haste uh, for that wizard tower and those two Teslas. And still has a hound up as well. Uh, so very, you know, very, very nice attack. Uh, you know, taking advantage of that exposed clan castle dropping a loon to take uh to lure all the air targeting troops out of it very very nicely done uh ozil actually six pack this war so huge shout out to him our nines hit at about what was it let me check my notes here uh 56 so not too bad on the town hall nine front we did have i believe four scouts uh so definitely not bad at all we'll go ahead and take a look at one more town hall nine hit uh we have naughty aka raj Going to be doing just a beautiful classic Shattered Lalo uh, where he's going to be dropping down golems over here on the right hand side of the base uh, hoping to get those golems on those mortars. As a lot of you already know, golems, the golem AI has completely changed. It's absolutely insane. But when he dropped his golem to target that mortar, ends up getting a Tesla out of it. Uh, so got really, really good value to start this off. And you guys are going to see just an incredible funnel that he's going to be setting uh, for his kill squad here. Gonna making, they're going to make it very, very far into the base. He does have bowlers that he is bringing along in the clan castle. Goes ahead, goes ahead and drops down queen. Here comes King, bowlers behind, didn't even need to bring wall breakers, just going to be jumping right into this core, uh, and he also saw he could get not only both the air defenses, he can get the enemy queen, a sweeper, and a, a few other air targeting defenses as well, uh, as all the troops are heading into the core, and notice he has queen right there in the core, and he still has ability, still has a golem up, uh, but that golem ends up taking the wall, uh, or taking the jump over the wall, ends up routing completely around the base. Like we said, the golem AI has completely changed. There was no other defenses inside the core that the jump led to. So the golem ends up backtracking, but ends up getting a Tesla out of it. Uh, Lalo starting over here on the upper right hand side of the base, hasting all these loons uh, into this expo. Uh, Kill Squad already got one of them. This was a symmetrical base. Also dropping down haste over at the 9 o'clock quadrant of the base as well, where both of the air defenses are. Nice heal spell, bringing the, healing those loons up uh, before they approach the wizard tower. And that archer tower is the last defense to go down. Ends up even swagging a haste on this one, guys. Uh, so good base identification, doing it with an all-time classic Shattered Lalo. Bringing some bowlers in the CC. Very, very nicely done uh, to Naughty on that hit. So those are the two Town Hall 9 hits we're going to be uh, showing on this recap. We'll go ahead and show you guys our two 10v10s. Starting right here with Helicase. Uh, like I said, this guy's hogs have more hit points than any other hogs in the game. We'll go ahead and see how he breaks this base down. Uh, this base did uh, take a couple hits. Uh, we did have a few different plans for it, but one thing we noticed, not sure if they tested this base, uh, but just suing your queen, she can actually reach that inferno tower over the wall. Uh, don't even need wall breakers in order to do so. So not only is queen going to be getting in a wizard tower, an air defense, 
which doesn't matter too much for a hog raid, but it does help with uh, pathing for the hogs. But most importantly, going to be grabbing that Inferno Tower, absolutely huge. It ends up pulling the CC as well, and it is a hound uh, on this uh, Tier 2 Town Hall 10. He's also going to be bringing three golems. Uh, uh, again, this attack, he's the only one I see that's doing this attack successfully uh 10v10 triple using stoned uh so sto basically a stoned hobo uh, dropping down wall breakers over here at three o'clock uh nothing to shoot at that hound he already sued his queen didn't bring any wizards for this funnel uh notice he just has his king his, and his bowlers uh and also the golems heading in raging everything up a nice jump leading into the core where he's gonna be getting expos teslas wizard towers archer towers uh just getting incredible value starting hogs over here at the bottom right hand side of the base uh, where he's going to be getting incredible value, bringing two heals, and uh, also bringing a rage uh, for this uh, for the hog portion, raging everything up like we have seen him do, uh, raging everything up, leading right into that inferno tower. Has a nice split where all of his or, or where the group of his hogs path away from the IT. About two hogs set off the giant bombs inside the Inferno Tower compartment. And as you see, does still have just a few hogs left. I'd say about four or five ending on that mortar and nothing but cleanup and didn't even bring a freeze. Uh, I, I know it's very common to bring a, a jump, a rage, two heal and a freeze. He went with a rage for the hogs. So just incredible base identification. As we saw, there's only one giant bomb in that Inferno Tower compartment. Uh, so again, good execution, even brought, check that out, even brought three of the uh, Halloween, what is it, the Pumpkin uh, Barbarians, absolutely loved it. That was one of our 10v10s, and that came a little earlier on into the war. This one right here by Gooves on his Vietnamese alter ego, this one came towards the very end. I think Go uh, Gooves dropped this uh, 10v10 with about an hour left in war. Uh, I'll also show you guys how the doubles went down when I go sh show you that replay. Uh, about three of our doubles ended up coming in in the last hour. We still had three 11s to clear. Jacob mopped the floor. But again, I will get into that when I show you guys the very next replay. Uh, this is Gooves slightly adjusting this attack. Uh, it was hit twice. He took a couple things that he liked from one of the attacks, a couple things he liked from the other, kind of blended them together and ended up getting an incredible three star. Uh, right here, just going to be doing an epic queen charge. Where he's going to be taking out, uh, well, the CC doesn't matter too much with the Lalo, uh, but setting a really, really nice uh, defense funnel or defense path for the Lala portion, uh, taking out air defenses, taking out a couple archer towers, uh, getting incredible value from the baby dragon as well as it just took out an archer tower. But Queen actually ends up uh, double backing and he's going to be taking out that inferno tower on this charge and Queen is going to be staying up. There goes the air defense, uh, went ahead uh, took out the AD. And you can see on this charge, he's already taken out the entire uh, top section of the base. Uh, you're going to see he's also going to be getting Queen as well, uh, where he goes in pops ability. Uh, starting his Lalo nice and early, not waiting too long to get this Lalo, uh, this flight portion off the ground. Uh, hasting everything up at the 3 o'clock section of the base. Uh, goes in, drops down his CC. How knows Queen under Rage ends up getting that Inferno Tower. Uh, she, the healers are getting pushed back by the Sweeper, but she is going to be staying up uh, and just dropping in these loons uh hound still doing all kinds of taking all air defenses down at this point still has a cc hound up uh goes ahead and pops right before these loons approach the inferno tower air sweeper down uh look at the placement of this heal spell and still has a couple loons to help distract these wizard towers coming in on the back side of the base and you can see queen still up with just with pretty much just a sliver of health but she ends up eating it on two double giant bombs ends up killing the queen at the very very end of the raid but she took out that wizard tower that would have done absolute work on that huge wad of loons right there absolutely huge uh huge attack by goose uh, again always coming through you guys already know household name at this point in time uh, at least on the channel so huge shout to goofs always coming through and let's see, 
So that was our 210v10s of the war. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and show you guys this epic hit uh, by, by Jacob uh, hitting on Shrek right here. Uh, you're going to see incredible value that he's going to be getting uh, from this queen walk right here. Uh, we were on voice with him while he was doing this attack and ends up bringing too many rages. His queen just literally walked for days on this attack. He's been doing a queen walk uh, and a insane Valk dive. Wait till you guys see what his Valkyries do on this attack. So queen just starting over here at nine o'clock. Just a beautiful, beautiful plan uh, on this base. I did take a few tries, uh, but Jacob ends up breaking this base down very, very nicely. Uh, you can see Baby Dragon's up here at the at uh, 12 o'clock section, uh, just setting a really, really nice funnel as he's going to be doing uh, a Golem Bowler Kill Squad, going to be coming in up there at the 12 o'clock section. And look at Queen. Very, very nice patience. Uh, didn't jump the gun and pop ability or, or drop another rage. Look, there's no defenses over here to target uh, that queen. She is just going to be walking four days down there. Uh, he's already at 23% and still has uh, all kinds of troops left up. Eagle has not even been uh, activated yet. So here comes the golem. Uh, notice how far that Golem walked. Again, the Golem AI is absolutely out of control right now. Uh, already gets the wall breakdown. King uh, right behind the Golem uh, before he goes ahead and drops his bowlers. Everything routing in. Here comes his bowlers coming out of the CC. Look at that beautiful leading Rage. Didn't drop him right on top of the troops. Kind of drops him so the Rage leads into the base. Absolutely love that. Uh, Jacob did go ahead and pop his ability down there at about 7.30. Uh, to keep Queen alive. And you can clearly see the funnel that has been set. Here comes the enemy CC. Uh, Going to be targeting his Queen. And just trying so hard to stay up. But he is taking all kinds of damage. Uh, ground Skelly's Baby Dragon working on the healers at this point. Uh, so Queen ends up uh, dying to the Eagle Artillery. Here comes all the Valks, guys. All the Valks leading in. Look at what these Valks are going through. A baby drag being on them. Double giant bombs. King and double infernal tower beams. Taking the town hall out with just a split second left. We could not we could not believe how, how clutch that was for those Valkyries taking all that damage. Still ends up being a solid 55%. Like I said, uh, Jacob did get a four pack this war on Shrek and end up taking out uh, their number six uh, on his main Jacob. Uh, so basically getting, well, I guess a, a six pack, but across three Town Hall 11s. Absolutely insane. Uh, really, really coming through. And we still had, I think, three, if not four Town Hall 11s that we had to clear just in the last couple hours. Uh, definitely tighten up the war. Uh, but I mean, huge, huge shout out to 2.0. They did get a solid two-star victory over FFS. And like I said, this is our season has come to an end. Uh, Fortune Steel has been eliminated from playoff contention. Uh, but it has been a very, very fun ride. Uh, we'll definitely wait and see what season four has in store uh, for Fortune Steel. But stay tuned to the channel for more premiere covers that we'll be sending out to you guys as uh, that league recap will be following this video very, very shortly. So definitely, definitely stay tuned for that. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, make sure you like it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And huge shout out to everybody in Fortune Steel uh, with a... I mean, ending the season at four and seven, a lot to improve on. Uh, but we definitely had a very, very good season as we are still a brand new clan. And our first uh, season in Invite has wrapped up. Thank you all, you guys, for the continued support on the channel. As always, this is Riggs from Clashing FFS. And I'll see you in the very next.